What I want to talk about today is, is how, how you can uh, become a super programmer like myself, uh, how you can write code like a real hacker um, using this one simple trick. Um, so I'm going to start with uh, telling two stories. Um, there's basically two stories of how I became a software programmer. Um, one of them is really cool, and the other one is true. Um, <laughs> they're, they're both kind of true. Um, I'm, not, I'm not just coming up with this. Um, so I was about 13. I horribly broke my leg in a sporting accident because I was a very sporty youth, as you can tell. Um, and you know, I just I didn't have anything to do. I was like, you know, it was summer. Everybody else was just like chasing ball, chasing tail, you know, whatever they were doing. I was at home. I didn't have any friends. But I had this one friend, and the friend was called IRC. But the problem was that on IRC, I didn't have any friends because nobody liked me. So I figured if I would just start, start a channel, then people would come and you know, they, I would have friends. Uh, but the way to have an IRC channel, and many of you are too young to remember this, is you need a bot um, to keep the channel when you're you know, offline. So I started to make a bot, and I didn't really know what programming was, but I heard that you make bots in this programming language called Perl. Um, so so I, I learned that, and that was pretty chill. Um, and then I wanted to share that with everybody because nobody came to my channel, but I figured if I share this bot, then maybe then we, people will come. Um, so I made a website for it because you know, there wasn't GitHub back in the day. So I learned HTML and CSS and eventually JavaScript. Um, and that's like a really cool story, but because um, you know, it involves all the things like open source and you know, being a hacker and you know, like, I don't know, I don't know, SSHing into Linux VPCs, you know, that's all kind of cool stuff. Um, but in actuality, um, I didn't do anything with that. I, you know, my leg healed, I went back to school, I went to university, I studied comparative literature, uh, philosophy major, woo! Um, and you know, th there's one side effect of, of studying comparative literature is that you're constantly broke. Um, you have absolutely no money, you have absolutely no skills that you can use to make money. Um, uh, so so, so you, know, you, you have no, basically like no, no survival. So I was mooching off this girl uh, who I was living with at the time, and she was like, you gotta get a job. So I went, you know, and I, I, I got a job in an office. I wore like a suit, I got like the cheapest suit that you could. Um, and I went to the office and they gave me this massive Excel spreadsheet and they said, this is your job. And I'm like, okay. Um, and for like about a day, I tried, you know, working with the Excel spreadsheet. But then I was like, all right, well, there's probably a way to like automate myself out of this job. And, 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 <laughs> and so I did. I, I basically, I, I learned how to write VBA macros, which is the only language that is worse than Perl, um, is, is VBA. <laughs> um, but, but basically, that worked. And what I learned from that experience is, is two things. One, um, that automating your tooling is like a fucking fantastic um, you know, ability. And then um, what I also learned is uh, this concept of macros. So uh, I want to talk to you today about Visual Studio Code. Uh, how many people here know Visual Studio Code? Everybody, more or less? It's kind of like if you use Sublime Text or Atom, it's basically like a text editor slash IDE, but it's made by Microsoft. Um, and what's cool about VS Code, uh, similar to Atom, is that you can actually write extensions for it, so you can basically write your own tools. And I've written some tools that have made me a lot better programmer, and I'm gonna demonstrate to you today by doing some live coding for approximately many minutes. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be like this. Uh, it's not gonna go well. I'm, this is like my fourth beer. Uh, <laughs> All right, let's do this. Um, so the first thing that you need to do uh, in order to, um, can you see this? Cool. The first thing you need to do in order to uh, create a Visual Studio uh, plugin, you say yo code. Uh, this is not a joke. Um, you, yeah, there's this tool called Yeoman Generator, um, and you can install generators for it. In this case, it's the code, VS Code Generator. Um, and now if, you know, this is where you kind of decided you want to be a real hacker. Um, if I was the kind of hacker that had actually like gone do the kind of Perl and SSH and whatever route, I would choose JavaScript. But I'm the Microsoft guy, so I, I chose TypeScript. Um, and we're gonna give this thing a name. Um, I'm just gonna call it VS Code Hacker Macros. And I'm just gonna say yes to everything. I don't know what that is. Then we're gonna pray that uh, NPM install works. Cool. Um, and then we're just gonna open VS Code. All right, do we see this? A bit bigger maybe? Bit. Yep, cool. Uh, so I'm just gonna like quickly show what's here. So uh, we have a package JSON. This is like a standard TypeScript node project. We have some uh, activation events. Um, we have some commands that we can you know, use to um, um, kind of you know, give, you know, basically start our program. And then we have this file though, extension.ts. I've treated a little bit, I made this buffers and storage files that we're gonna like store some of these macros in, but they're not very important and we don't need to really uh, look at them right now. 
Um, but it, essentially, to start kind of um, doing this, I think what real hackers do is first thing we use multi cursors. I don't know if you know this, you can do command D and you can multi cursor selection like this. And then you can just delete it because real hackers don't use comments. So we can come <laughs> and delete those. Uh, real hackers also don't uh, log anything, so we can delete those. So that's fine. And uh, now we have basically the simplest possible VS Code, um, like, you know, like extension that you can have. So what I want to do is I want to write an extension live right now that enables you to record macros that you can use to active, like sort of automate your workflows. Um, so I think the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just like, modify this um, um, thing, this default one. We're going to make it a recorder. I'm going to implement this in a minute. Don't worry. And then we're going to copy that and make that a play. And then we need one more. This is a kind of boring plumbing one. We need to over, override the, um, the type command in the standard thing. And then we just need to put those in the subscription so we're kind of cleaning up the thing. It's, we're not actually going to clean up anything. This deactivate method, you're supposed to do something here, but we're not going to go real hackers don't actually free resources. So uh, <laughs> that's one thing. Now, uh, the next thing we're going to do is I'm um, going to just implement this recorder real quick. Um, it's relatively simple. Um, all we really need to do is we're just going to need to create basically like a uh, you know, storage class. Um, and then we're going to create, um, uh, we're going to need to put that in disposable. We're going to need to put some, uh, some handlers. Uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, let me just see if we can tune this up a little bit. Uh, just put that on. All right. Should be better. Um, it's, so this bit is a bit tricky where we need to basically, we need to kind of like register some of the <laughs> things here. So uh, I don't know if you can see that, but it's like, yeah, it's like boring plumbing thing. This is the thing about TypeScript. It's like, you know, you need to write this all this bullshit code that you normally like wouldn't have to. Um, anyway, so that's the way that works. Um, Anyway, um, I ran out of beer. Uh, I'm going to need somebody to help me. Uh, any volunteers? Can I have them? Oh, no, 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 Richard, you, you misunderstood me. Okay. Um, come here. Okay. All right, Richard, is this mic on? Yes. Yeah, can you tell the audience your name? Richard. Hi. All right, Richard, uh, I'm going to go get a beer uh, if you finish this program for me. Um, so it's very simple. Just implement like a replay class and you know the things. Just whatever you do, do not press backspace or arrow keys because that will fuck everything up. Okay. <laughs> Let's see what I can do here. This <laughs> 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 pretty easy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what do you reckon? What is this? I don't know. I can't see what you're doing. Is it looking? I think it's so far, yeah? Yeah. 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 I might, might change this, but yeah, OK. All right, thanks, Richard. So uh, yeah, that was that. Was that. Um, basically, uh, what this thing does, um, has anybody seen this website called Hacker Typer? Yeah. yeah, so this is Hacker Typer, but you record your own, own Hacker Typer kind of thing. Um, so what I'm actually doing here right now is implementing this thing. Um, and then we can just go into the debug mode. We can start debugging. We can open a new instance of Visual Studio Code. Um, and then within here, we can, um, we can basically just say record macro. And then now I can say hello, reactivate 10, except, ah, no, not 10. I'm just going to do. Uh, X instead, and I can save that macro. Um, I'm gonna give it a name. React. Well, I'm gonna call it one reactivate, so it sorts. Um, and then hopefully I should be able to. Oh, it doesn't sort. Oh. Cool. So now I should be able to just play what I just recorded, um, including things like selections and multi cursors and you know whatnot. So this thing is called um, VS Code Hacker Typer. Um, it is in the, uh, in the Visual Studio Code extension marketplace. It's absolutely free. I don't know why they call it marketplace. I don't think you can make any money on this. <laughs> uh, but um, you know, Microsoft, uh, I guess. And anyway, so, so, so th this is what I made. Thank you. Um, So I have a couple of real quick uh, things. So VS Code Hacker Typer is there. You can use it. Um, but you might you know, want to, you know, why would anybody make something like this? Uh, but also, most importantly, why would you want to use this? Um, and I think, I don't remember what my slides are. OK. So uh, why did I make this? One of, them is, uh, one of them is that I've always really wanted to be like the, one of the people who can do live coding. But I just can't. I'm like, 
like really slow typer and I make tons of typing mistakes and I get very, very nervous. But at the same time, I would like to, you know, have, you know, this tool that I can use to actually like communicate really, really complex ideas to people. And sometimes the best way to communicate about code is to show the code. But you can't just show them massive amounts of code. And all those things that uh, Claire showed, um, you know, the tools that we can have in presentation editors and things are great, but the best way to understand code is to be able to jump around it, you know, like look at things, explain, explain them. I believe here, um, I might have, uh, I already broke this, so I can't show you. But you can go, you can kind of like go and, and mix things up and, you know, like highlight things and then just keep continue typing and it kind of, kind of works. Um, the other thing is that I wanted to explore, like, in, in truly this story about um, Excel wasn't like hokey um, kitsch. It, it's, it's really like where I started um, really programming. And now that, you know, like we have, you know, these tools that are automatable in the programming languages that we all know, or VS Code, uh, TypeScript or, or JavaScript, I wanted to kind of see, like, how, how can we do this? And VS Code extensibility is really, really great. Um, what I, I, I'm not a big fan of TypeScript as a programming language. I, like, if, if you have a language that has the word type in it, it should probably do type checking, but it doesn't actually work. Like, there's so many, so, so, so many broken things in it that doesn't actually, um, you know, like, correctly validate the, you know, the types of your code. Uh, but that said, you know, this experience of learning how VS Code extensibility works couldn't have been easier. I did not read any documentation. All I went is like, okay, well, let's see what this automated generator gives me and explore the, you know, the API via the autocompletions and all that. So um, I, I thought that was like a really, really great experience. Um, now I'm gonna <laughs> leave you with this. Uh, really topical. Uh, we are, uh, there's another quote from Richard saying, our friends at Formidable uh, who made victory. So we are basically a, a software consultancy that, you know, does a lot of open source stuff. Uh, so victory that uh, Richard mentioned is something that we made. Uh, spectacle that Claire used uh, is something that um, we made, and, and a bunch of other things as well. And you know we are hiring, so if you want to work, you know, on this kind of like cool open source space, please do talk to us. And the most important thing about this is why did I really make this? Is uh, recently Formidable started to pay people for any open source contributions they do on their free time, uh, which means I got paid for this shit, uh, <laughs> which is you know pretty incredible. So um, that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>